Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Boring Objects Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes Now in this mega exciting podcast I just talk about stuff talk about uh, I choose a subject or an object and I just talk about it for a little while and in this time that you listen to me and my boring voice you can just relax your body Relax your mind, just focus in on my voice, so that those thoughts that were in your mind before you press the play button, just start to drift away, naturally and slowly, and your body automatically relaxes, and that's all there is to it. There's nothing for you to do, it's just me waffling on about something that's mildly insignificant. So today I'm going to talk about, what should I talk about today? You see I like to plan things. Let me think. Uh, today I'll talk about jobs. It's a bit more specifically, jobs that I've had. And I, don't, I don't think that I've talked about jobs in this podcast before. But if I have, then it'll still be different from the original one because... I can't remember anything that I've ever spoken about. I think I did one about hats. Um, I think. I don't really take any notice. Once I've recorded them, I upload it and I forget about it. So, this... going to be me talking about from my own experience the jobs that I've had and I'll I, I might list them chronologically that's a word I can't spell chronologically is there how many L, how many ends are in that chronologically so, I'll start off right from the beginning, when I was a chimney sweep, age three. Um, I only did that job for six months until my dad was arrested because it was illegal. No, it didn't really happen. So the first job I had, pretty much I would say would be working as a paper round a newspaper delivery boy or newspaper deliverer deliverer and I guess I was 12 probably at the time and it was a an evening round so it was after school so I'd literally go from school directly to the newsagent shop which was called Hammond's so I still remember that and that's where I would pick up the papers and I'd have my own yeah I'd, I think I'd have my own bag and it was a bright orange bag 
I guess that was more for visibility because a lot of the delivery children who delivered papers were doing it on bicycles you know early evening or early morning when it was often quite dark um, because in, in England we only have three hours of sunlight so that's probably why yeah we don't have street lights either um, so there's a lot of we have to wrap ourselves our bodies in um, bubble wrap otherwise because we keep banging into each other so we don't hurt each other when we walk through the street um, yeah so the I was going to say the pavements are made of marshmallow, but that would be silly. I mean, you just sink, wouldn't you? Plus, for kids, I just, I'd just be eating all the time. I'd just be eating the pavements. So, yeah, that wouldn't work. It doesn't work on many levels. So, yeah, I had that as a first job. And then I got myself an early morning paper round. Now, I never got myself a Sunday paper round because Sunday papers were too big. You'd have all the supplements and as far as I was concerned, that was just abuse. To get someone to carry something so heavy around on their shoulders, especially when there was little, little boys and girls who weren't physically really uh, developed enough <clears throat> to be carrying such weights. Even the evening paper rounds and the mornings sometimes had supplements and there'd be a big, my shoulders would be so sore that the, 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 I'd have an indent, indent from the strap of the newspaper bag along my shoulder. Um, to start with, I was walking. And then I got a bicycle, which made it a lot easier and a lot quicker as well. But I enjoyed being a paper boy. I can't, I'm not saying it was my life's calling, but, uh, or that, you know, when I was a small child, that it was a dream of mine. All my friends wanted to be astronauts. I wanted to be a paper boy. I wanted to deliver papers so people can read about the news and all the positivity that's going on in the world. That was my dream. And so I did that. I then had... This is a period of my life that's a little bit fuzzy because I had a few of those jobs at the same time so at one point I had an early morning paper round Monday to Saturday and an evening paper round which would be at four o'clock in the you know four or five in the evening so I'd get home from I'd go there from school at about four o'clock and then I'd deliver to when I get home probably about half five The early morning one would start probably maybe half six to about eight. So it's enough time to have my breakfast. Yeah. And I also got a weekly leaflet. No, no, it's a weekly paper I think it was like a local gazette type of thing and I used to deliver once a week those so I used to have a few thousand to deliver every week the weekends and then 
once a month I delivered the town crier. So that was a monthly thing. And that would be uh, like a like a little leaflet pamphlet thing that had just local businesses it's just an ad, it was just adverts really sometimes there were leaflets to be added as well and so i i did that once a month as well at one point i did have all of those jobs at the same time which didn't leave a lot of room for school or outside activities because I was hoping to train as a pole dancer but I just didn't have the time so you know I had to at one point I thought I'm going to lose this dream I might as well do it while I've got the flexibility because I was I kind of I was halfway wanted to be a fireman and halfway wanted to be uh be in the RAF and jump out of planes but I'm scared of heights and I don't really much like fires so I thought maybe instead of jumping down a pole or sliding down a pole as in with a fire station maybe if I danced on the pole that would be almost like the the next best thing because if you do it properly or if you do it well and you've got your legs wrapped around it and you like let your body go floppy, it is almost like jumping out of a plane, I imagine. So, uh, you know, I had these dreams even then. The next job I had was in a bakery. It was a restaurant in the town that I lived, which was handy because I was too young to commute. And I started off working in the kitchen, kitchen porter in washing dishes, etc., etc. Well, just okay. I didn't watch. I didn't wash any etc. It's just just dishes and um, plates, knives and forks and spoons, cups as well, mugs, little sauces for the cups. I uh, never understood sauces in a restaurant. So you got the saucer, and then you've got the cup and the saucer, and you spill... If you spill the tea, it goes into the saucer. That isn't one of the points of going into a restaurant, is spilling food and, and drink on the table. Isn't that one of the, the good things about it? Because you don't have to clean it up. Sometimes I just pour the whole thing on the table. Uh, after a while of doing that, someone pointed out, maybe you should wait till after you've eaten before you do that. Because it's going over everyone. Dripping on the floor onto our onto our onto our clothes, and I was like, okay. But we live and learn. You know, I was, I was only two years old. I didn't know. So, the other thing, yeah, I did that, and then I was asked if I wanted to work in the bakehouse, which was the bakery, and that. So when I was doing the washing up job in that restaurant I was doing it in the evenings but the bakehouse was Saturday and Sunday morning so at that time I couldn't have had an early morning paper round either I'd stopped and so I've had a, few, had a few paper rounds over the years uh, so I did that uh, for a while and then I just continued doing paper rounds until I left school 
and then when I left school at 15 years old, I got a job in a chip shop. And I wasn't going to get a job in a chip shop. It wasn't my grand, it wasn't part of my grand plan. But I didn't have a grand plan because I was 15 and I'm sure some people at 15 know exactly what they want to do and I've got um, no respect for them for that at all. Um, no, I, did, I, did, I didn't know what I wanted to do, I really didn't. All I knew is I didn't want to, I didn't want to go to school anymore and I hoped to one day see a lady naked. That was kind of my, that was my goal in life at 15. There wasn't anything else I really wanted out of life. And I remember when I left school at 15 in the April 1986. And my dad spoke to me in the garden. He didn't call me into the garden to talk. We just happened to be in the same place at the same time, the same vicinity. I think he was he was down the garden where we had a workshop and I think I might have been standing outside uh, counting the ants on the floor uh, which was one of my favourite things to do and he said to me well he waited he said to me he said, he said uh, Jason what are you going to do with your life I said what he said, what, what are you going to do with your life? I said, what? He said, wait a minute, I'll come closer. So he came, he walked a bit closer. Because uh, he was too far away for me to hear. That's what I mean by that. Um, and he said, what are you going to do with your life? I said, what are you going to do with your life? And he said, what? I said, nothing. Nothing, sorry dad. Um... I said, I don't know. Do I have to decide now? I'll just just come out to look at the ants. I didn't know a life decision was required. A bit more notice next time, if, that's all, if you don't mind. And he said, look, you, you can't live here forever. I said, I've only lived here for six years. I think some people would call me pedantic. But... Uh, I just, you know, I didn't expect to live there forever. Um, not really. But, you know, past the age of 15, maybe, I was, you know, I was hoping until at least adulthood, because I was still a child, I suppose, legally. And in my brain, I was probably about 10 still. I wasn't the most mature I feel I became an adult when I was about 35. I think that's when I started to um, have a bit more of a, an adult brain. It took a while. It took a while. Ask any girlfriend of mine, they'll tell you that I was very childish. I mean, I remember... I think my, fifth, my fourth girlfriend leave me because... I wouldn't go anywhere without me blankie. I needed me, you know, everyone needs a little bit of safety, don't they? To feel safe. Well, my blanket was a safe thing for me. She said, well, can't you wash it? I said, no, that's part of it. If you wash it, it gets rid of the smell. She said, well, yeah, that would be the part, the point of washing it. We didn't agree on much. But... He said, well, what were you going to do? And I said, well, I don't know. He said, well, you're going to need to get a job. Because you won't be going to university, will you? And he laughed. And I didn't realise that there were so many people listening because I heard laughter from all the gardens in the neighbourhood. It's almost like everyone was outside listening. Like he'd almost planned it. I mean, if it had been now, it'd probably be on YouTube. A bit cruel, really. So, he said, well, you're going to have to get yourself a job. 
I said, really? He said, yeah. Why? I mean, I, I'd only been left school for probably... I think it literally was like half an hour after I got home. You know, he was waiting there um, with my suitcases packed. So I, I kind of felt a little bit under pressure to get myself a job. So the next day, or that the same day, depending on what was true, I can't remember, but it was pretty much straight afterwards. I went into town. I didn't even, didn't even go far. I just crossed the road, basically, from where I lived. Walked into a chip shop that said help wanted, or vacancies. Actually, I think it was help wanted, because I don't know if I would have understood what vacancies meant back then. Um, and sh I just said, uh, can I have a job, please? He said, uh, uh, I think he was a little bit taken back by my bravado and my uh, super enthusiastic outlook. My go-getting, my go-getter kind of personality. So uh, he said, well, I'll pop back later. We finish at two and we'll have a little chat. I said, I don't want a chat. I want a job. Don't mess me about. None of that happened. I said, okay, then. And I was with my friend, Dean. And I'm not sure what we did next. I thought we might. I might have played hide and seek for a little while and then I, he was really good at it he was brilliant at hide and seek I've not seen him since that day I think he's still hiding anyway this the chip shops are that's going to be a subject for another recording on its own. But, you know, I got the job. So that was my first job I had for two years. So that took me to 17. And then I got a job. I had a, I had a kind of like a, an argument with him about concert tickets to go and see David Bowie. My argument was that he kept going to concerts and I didn't. And for some reason, I think I was a bit jealous or annoyed. He kept going on about it, and I was I didn't didn't have anything. I didn't have any money to do anything, and it annoyed me. So I I think I called him a a plum or something, and he didn't like it. And he said, "I'm not a plum." I said, I know you're not. And that, that just confused things. Yeah. I think I wore a straw skirt as well on that day for some reason. Isn't it? The mind's a weird thing, isn't it? Bringing, just remember these memories up from nowhere. That didn't happen. And... Then I got a job in a supermarket, but it wasn't a proper supermarket because it wasn't a proper town. It was this little town where nothing really was real. It was a little bit like a dream. And I got this little job. It was a full-time job. It was in this really small supermarket. It was busy. It was full of full of objects to sell but it was it was small but I worked there until I worked there for I don't know oops April May June July August uh, April March April May June probably about three months and that was about enough for me and I left and 
then I worked in, oh, I forgot about this. I had other jobs. I had a job in, there was one week I had, I think, three full-time jobs. I started three full-time jobs and left all of them within a week. Uh, one was, uh, I think it was in a restaurant. One was in a, no, it was a ho, yeah, it was a restaurant, but it was in the kitchen. So I had that job. I left after a day. I found another full time job. I was working in a laundry. It was like a, like a proper laundry place, not a laundromat, but where they do I forget what they call it, steam room. Yes, they steam stuff. I worked there for a day. That was one of the hardest jobs I ever had because it was just, uh, well, I couldn't be bothered to do anything. I mean, anything's hard when you're lazy, isn't it? But it's very hot. So I didn't go back to that. And then I had a, a job in, I'll, I'll, um, Trying to remember, wait a minute. So there was the re- there was the restaurant in the kitchen, the laundry place. Oh yeah, I had a job full time cleaning caravans on a caravan site, and I did that for a day, and I didn't get paid from any of them because I didn't finish the week. You know, I didn't didn't give them any notice. So I had three full time jobs. So I got the first job. I think on the Friday I got the job and start Monday. Started Monday, quit that one. And I got the next job I got to start on Wednesday. So I got the job on the Tuesday and finished it. And then uh, I got the next job on a Thursday to start the Friday and I didn't go back. So Monday to... I told Craig David that story and... He nicked the idea and turned it into a song. Except he changed the lyrics. Originally, um, I was talking about various uh, packets of biscuits that you could buy. Like Jamie Dodgers and Digesties and Hobnobs and stuff. Monday, I bought some Hobnobs. Tuesday, I bought some... Uh, toffee biscuit ones and you know had that happen a lot in my life people stealing ideas it's okay I don't mind I'm at peace I'm just happy to see people be successful that's that's the main thing in my life really I don't mind if the idea was mine and it was originally about biscuits and different jobs I've had as long as you know something wonderful came out of it for somebody else So that didn't work out. And then I got a job in a residential home. They were called old people's homes back then. And uh, I think before that they were called geriatric farms. But they stopped. They stopped using that terminology by probably the end of the 90s. And my job was to be a cook there. And I was being trained up by the cook that was already there when they were leaving. I lasted, I think, a week. And I had a lot of problems with the porridge, funny enough. A lot of complaints about the porridge. Uh, It was either too salty or too hard <laughs> or too sticky or too smelly uh, it was just I couldn't win I mean I'm laughing because it was such a ridiculous situation and I got sacked and to get sacked because of porridge you know not many people can say that I don't imagine many people would like to say that 
and then I got a job in a factory and that was okay I, I didn't mind that I was just packing putting stuff in boxes and making boxes that I put the stuff into before putting the stuff into it's hard to do it afterwards and I did that then I left got a job in a pub that was rubbish I left that and then I went back oh I, I got a job in a freight firm uh, a company that lorries that delivered fuel you know petrol and stuff like that so I worked in a, a freight firm in the office and I I can't remember if I left or I got sacked but I wasn't very good at it and then I went back no I think I left actually and I went back to the factory job because I was friends with a supervisor and I phoned him up and I said can I come back and he said oh I didn't realise you'd left so I went back there and then I left there to go to Spain to live, so to, to work in Spain. But I ended up there for the afternoon and came home. Um, I got some cleaning jobs for a while to sort of tide me over, sort of working offices, cleaning offices in the evenings and in the mornings. So that sort of kept me above board. And then I got... What happened then? I worked as a... Canvasser for windows, double glazing. Knock on people's doors. So I did that for the summer. And then I moved to London. Worked in an agency. Doing really menial work. And then I moved back again to the little town. Worked in canvassing again. But also had a another full-time job back at the factory. But this time it was night shift. So that was the, the for the first time I'd actually was earning good money. Night shift was more money hourly than the other one. With a better salary. And I was also earning um, pretty much full-time money doing the double glazing. But that was only three hours a night, or three hours in the early evening. So I, I, I didn't do that for too long, probably two months. And then I just, just did the night shift job, because it was a little bit too much to do two jobs. And I didn't need to. And then... I left there and I went back to doing cleaning work, cleaning jobs for a, a few months, just to tick by. And then I was in London again and I had lots of different jobs, temporary, uh, with an agency, so no proper employment. But before that I worked in a bakery, a big bakery. Um, also I had a part time job trying to sell insurance door to door another one part time trying to get people to take uh, Sky satellite dishes so they could watch Sky television no one wanted that back then even if it was free and if they kept it then they'd get charged you know they could have it free for a month and I I would get commission and no one wanted them, which is weird. Uh, so I a heavy to carry around as well. I then I think I made a metal back then. 
they are made of plastic. So I worked in a bakery and then I worked in as various places, cold store places, putting stickers on meat. And then I worked in the Elephant and Castle on a record store for the Christmas period, like the winter during December. And then I worked on the agency and I tried quite a few different jobs trying to sell sales jobs that were commission only. And you know, I think I had about six of those over the years, but they never came to anything because I just couldn't I couldn't live without eating, you know, I needed to eat and they the commission, you know, it was training involved and it just took too long. I might have been good, I don't know. Um so I continued with those kinds of jobs. Uh worked at a nightclub, uh did other cleaning jobs, administration jobs, DJ, worked as a DJ for a while. Um two thousand and one I started working in sales and I did sold phone contracts, mobile phone contracts on the phone. I was cold selling. Then I worked in insurance, selling car insurance. Then I worked in a gift shop for a while. Then I went back to car insurance. And then I worked at a gift shop for a while again when I was at university. I was, uh, I think I was 83 years old then. And I had a job in a psychiatric ward unit working as a care assistant. Then I worked as a counsellor for a few years. Then I, because I was trained at the university for that. Then I had a job as a care assistant for a little while. And then I went back to car, uh, car insurance again for a different company. And that was my last job. Yeah. I'm not sure how to end this recording. I'm not told about the jobs. I'm a little bit worried about my friend Dean though. I mean, where did he go to? I mean, it's one thing being good at hiding, but blimey, that's like 40 odd years ago now. Huh. Anyway, thank you for listening. And, uh, I'm going to go. Speak to you again soon. Hope you found this recording nice and relaxing. Bye.